Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Laura from the library. Welcome to Pajama Jam. Tonight I'm going to read a few stories to you as you get ready for bed. Do you have your jammies on? Are you all nice and cozy? Do you have your favorite stuffed animal snuggled up close? You do? Let's get started. Our first story tonight is called Jake Stays Awake and it's by Michael Wright and I have the permission of Fuel and Friends Publishing to read it to you. Jake is a little boy who can't get to sleep. So he crawls into bed with his mom and dad. Now mom and dad can't get to sleep. So what do they do? Let's find out. There was a little boy whose name was Jake and every night he'd stay awake. Unless I can sleep with my parents, he said. I won't close my eyes and I won't go to bed. So every night around 1044, he'd wander on up to his mom and dad's door and stand there and knock till they finally said, all right, all right, Jake, you can sleep in our bed. Come on in, Jake. This drove his poor parents straight up a tree. They had a bed made for two and not a bed made for three. We love you, dear Jake, but we can't even doze. How can we sleep with your toes up our nose? But night after night, for a moment of rest, they let Jake climb in. They thought it was best. And that's when they knew something had to be done. Their sleeping arrangements were no longer fun. So his mother and father thought hard and thought long and came up with a plan that just couldn't go wrong. We'll sleep with you, son, just not in our bed, said dad. Is there some other place we could try out instead, said mom. Jake considered their offer a second or two. Then smiling, he said, I know just what to do. He headed outside and pointed straight up. Uh-oh, thought his parents. No way, thought his pup. Then they climbed to the roof and attempted to sleep. But sleep's pretty tricky on something so steep. Then nervously, Jake said, well, perhaps we should try finding some other spot that's not quite so high. Jake climbed up the stairs and said, let's all sleep here. But that turned out to be a big pain in the rear. Jake jumped in the bathtub with his rubber duck. Then in popped his parents and they all got stuck. He thought that the kitchen might be a good place but it's tough to sleep when you're feeding your face. The garbage can seemed a great idea at first till things started stinking like old liverwurst, yuck. The car was as boring as boring could be, like taking a long drive with nothing to see. As he lay there and listened to his parents snore, Jake thought of the one place he hadn't before. Instead of the roof or the stairs or the bath, instead of the kitchen, the car or the trash, Jake thought that his bed didn't sound quite so bad. So he whispered, good night to his mom and his dad. Jake walked himself back to bed in his room where he slept without moving till quarter to noon. His parents are happy again with their son and everyone's realized it's not always fun to have kids sleep with parents night after night. But every once in a while, well, that's quite all right. Jake's parents are so happy he's finally going to sleep in his own bed because everyone in the family needs a good night's sleep, don't they? 
Our next bedtime story is How Do You Go to Sleep? And it's by Kate McMullen. Now, animals all over the world have different ways of getting tucked in when they're ready for bed. Let's read the story and find out what happens when they go to sleep at night. How do you go to sleep? Squirrel curls up inside her den within a hollow tree. Octopus changes colors as he slumbers under sea. How do you go to sleep? Is a tree your cozy bed? Do you turn purple, orange, and red? Rest your head upon your back? Sleep with others in a stack? No, zebra locks his knees and stays standing up all night. Tiger naps in leafy shade to hide her stripes from sight. Frog hibernates all winter under snow so deep. Dolphin shuts just one eye and goes swimming in her sleep. How do you go to sleep? Do you stand and lock your knees? Is your bed beneath the leaves? Is your blanket made of snow? Do you sleep swim to and fro? No. Mouse digs a tunnel, then she snoozes underground. Pigeon perches with his friends where shelter can be found. Seal pokes out her snout and doze floats in the bay. Skunk runs around all night, then sleeps the day away. How do you go to sleep? Do you burrow underground? Roost with all your pals around? Do you float until dawn? Does the sunrise make you yawn? No. Well, when you go to bed, if you don't sleep a tree sleep or sea sleep, a tuck sleep or heap sleep, a stand sleep or leaf sleep, a snow sleep or swim sleep, a nest sleep or perch sleep, a float sleep or sun sleep, how do you go to sleep? Do you first turn off the light? Do you wish the moon good night? Do you close your tired eyes? Listen to some lullabies? Do you think about your day and all the fun you had at play? Do you hug and kiss, kiss, kiss? Do you go to sleep like this? Yes, you do. Good night. Wasn't that a sweet story? Let's read one more book and then it'll be time for you to share goodnight kisses with your grown up. Our last story tonight is Kiss Goodnight and it's written by Amy Hest and I have the permission of Candlewick Press to read it to you. And in this story, little Sam is getting ready to go to bed. Mrs. Bear read him a story, tucked him in, brought him a glass of warm milk and asks if he's ready for bed, but he says he's not. What else could he be waiting for? Let's find out. It was a dark and stormy night on Plum Street. In the little white house, Mrs. Bear was putting Sam to bed. Ready now, Sam? Oh no, said Sam, I'm waiting. Mrs. Bear sat on the bed beside Sam and they read his favorite book and they both knew all the words. Afterward, Mrs. Bear pulled one side of the blanket way up high under Sam's chin and the blanket was red. She pulled the other side too, tucking it under his toes like a nest. Outside the wind blew. Ready now, Sam? Oh no, said Sam. I'm waiting. Mrs. Bear arranged Sam's friends in the bed and they all snuggled close in the blanket that was red. Outside, the rain came down, splat on the roof, splat, splat on the windows. The wind blew. 
ready now, Sam? Oh no, said Sam. I'm waiting. Mrs. Bear poured milk in two glasses and they both drank milk and it was warm sliding down. Afterward, Mrs. Bear yawned. <sighs> you must be ready now, she said. But Sam shook his head. I'm waiting, he said. Hmm, said Mrs. Bear. Let me think. We've read a book and made a nest, arranged your friends, and had warm milk. Sam, she said, what did I forget? You know, said Sam. Hmm, said Mrs. Bear. Book, blanket, friends, milk, book, blanket, friends, milk. Sam waited. He waited and waited. And then at last, Mrs. Bear said, Oh, I know. Kiss goodnight, Sam. And she bent way down, kissing Sam once and twice and then twice more. Again, cried Sam. And she bent way down, kissing Sam once and twice and then twice more. Outside the wind blew and the rain came down. But in the little white house, Mrs. Bear was taking out the light, whispering, kiss goodnight, Sam, kiss goodnight. And Sam went to sleep on a dark and stormy night on Plum Street. That's the story. He was just waiting for his goodnight kiss. Boys and girls, thanks so much for joining me tonight for Pajama Jam. Now it's time to give your grown up a great big goodnight kiss. And it's time for me to go back to work in the library. So I'm gonna put my mask on. Just like that. I'll see you soon. Good night.